Hey guys, I know I've been AWOL for a little while now, probably right around a month, and I will explain the reason why at the end of this video, but really what I want to talk about in this video is the new Netflix original movie called War Machine. This film was directed by David Michaud, who also directed 2014's The Rover, which I highly recommend. But The War Machine stars Brad Pitt as General Glenn McMahon, who is essentially appointed to end the war in Afghanistan. This is actually based upon a book called The Operators. It's based on a real-life general, but this is a little bit more skewed version. Um, but that's essentially what it's based around. But this is what the film is essentially about, is that the general has to go... Um, gets appointed this new position to go in the war in Afghanistan and really bring peace to the land, so more or less, and get the troops out. But there's a lot of complications that the general finds himself up against that not only have his previous um, people that have had the position have faced and have been fired for, so he kind of has to roll along with the punches, and he ends up hitting a lot of roadblocks along the way. And it's frustrating, but at the same time it's entertaining, so let's get into the review about my thoughts. Now, I am no fan of political films nor of war films. They just have not been the type of films that really interest me. Probably the only war film that I really, really liked is probably like Forrest Gump. And that's just for... It's got way more than just war aspects to it. Um, but I'm just not a big fan of those genres. And this is the, a film that kind of combines those two, and that's the main focus. I wasn't really interested in that for when it came across my Netflix queue. The reason I was interested in it was for Brad Pitt. Um, his portrayal of this general, it kind of looked interesting based on some of the um, trailers and sort of scenes that I have sort of seen uh, about this movie because Netflix is really focusing on doing their own original content now. So this is a big film starring a big star who Netflix is making. So of course I was intrigued and I had to check it out. Now... The entire reason why I checked it out was because of Brad Pitt's performance. And to be honest, I think that's probably the biggest highlight of the entire film. There really wasn't a whole lot to the film other than Brad Pitt's performance that was at least intriguing to me. I did like it a lot. He was very charismatic. I liked the character that he played. However, there's a couple of issues that I have with it as well. It's a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. But if you're a fan of Quentin Tarantino's and Glorious Bastards... The character is almost the same, just like in modern times and with less violence, and um, he gets a lot more screen time. That's They're essentially the same character, though, with the same sort of accent and the same sort of mannerisms and the way he talks and things like that. It's very similar to what he did in Inglorious Bastards, but now that he has an entire film just for that character... It gets kind of old after a little while. Like, it's really fun in the beginning. You're like, this is great. As the characters are being introduced and we're learning about what's going on and what different uh, characteristics each person has, all these weird things, it's a lot of fun. However, once we get into the real meat of the film, it just becomes a lot more dull and it's not quite as interesting as it was in the beginning 20 to 30 minutes. The supporting cast is also pretty decent. There's a couple of characters that I thought did really well. Um, Will Poulter, who was part of Where the Millers, has a pretty good couple of decent scenes. As well as Lakeith Stanfield of Get Out, if you remember his character from Get Out. Um, those two characters have by far the most interesting aspects. Unfortunately, we get a little bit of introduction to them towards the beginning. And then we see them. the big scene that actually matters with them happens towards the end. Um, and we miss out a lot of them. But I feel like there's a lot of great supporting characters, a lot of great actors. Topher Grace is in this. There's a couple of surprise ca cameos. But they just amount to nothing in the end. Because they get so little screen time and so it's so scattered that you never really care about the supporting characters. Brad Pitt's character of General Glenn McMahon is the main character. But when we get those interactions with supporting characters, it feels like it just doesn't matter. It's more of a throwaway and it was kind of a waste for Netflix to get these bigger actors for scenes that essentially just didn't matter. People who are really talented that just don't add up to anything in the two-hour runtime of this movie. As for the way the film looks, it's visually sort of just okay. There's nothing really surprising or grand. There's no great scenes in this movie that really stand out in my mind. Um, the director, who also, as I mentioned earlier, directed The Rover, he has a very sort of plain color palette that he likes to use. He doesn't use a lot, like to use a lot of bright colors. There's really no big sequences that 
stick out in your mind. It's just more of a sort of a bland color palette. He starts to try and go for realism, which I'm all for, but after two hours, it's just no longer appealing. There's really nothing visually interesting. So you really have to uh, rely on the story. And then that's where I think this film also falters is with the story. And to be completely honest, the story just isn't that engaging. It's just not something that I felt involved in. It wasn't something that I really cared about. And again, maybe this is just attributed to the fact that I'm not a big war or political film junkie. It's just not the genre that I prefer to watch. So after the characters get introduced and we sort of have that fun moment of Brad Pitt's uh, character and his accent and all this great stuff, and then we get past the, all the character introductions of like all of his supporting characters, the people that are on his team um, that he trusts so much. Once we get out of that, it just becomes really dull and boring and just a lot of talk. And there's really not a whole lot there to really be invested in. There are some funny scenes and some um, great dialogue throughout. And I'm not going to lie, it's not a bad movie, but it's just not appealing and in a lot of ways, this movie actually reminded me of the movie Jarhead, where not a whole lot happens, but at the same time, it doesn't like visually appeal you. Although Jarhead does have a couple visually appealing scenes, like with the burning of the oil. I don't know if you've seen Jarhead, but that was a really great visual scene. This movie doesn't have that, but it does fall along the same lines of it's sort of a war-ish movie, military type movie where there isn't a great color palette. There's not like anything visually exciting, well, except for, with exception of that scene in Jarhead. Um, and the story just sort of is sort of bland. There's not a whole lot to invest in unless you're really paying attention and really care about the situations that are at hand, whether it be the certain war or great characters. I feel like Jarhead did have the better characters, but War Machine sort of had that appeal of Brad Pitt's character like his whole persona in the movie is very appealing it's just not enough to carry the whole movie and it just becomes very dull and speaking of dull this movie is War Machine is two hours and once you start watching it it starts to begin to feel like three hours edging on four hours like it starts to feel like it's dragging so long and it's just not that much fun to watch when you feel like you're asking yourself when is this going to end? Overall, I found War Machine pretty lacking in a lot of areas. Again, it's not a bad movie, but if it wasn't for the performance of Brad Pitt really hanging on to the meat of this movie, I think that I would be giving it a lot lower grade than I am. But the grade that I am going to give the Netflix movie War Machine is a C-. minus. So guys, if you've seen the film, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section down below about what your thoughts are about this movie, as well as while you're down there, leave a like if you feel so inclined, as well as subscribe if you haven't done so already. And now, as promised, the reason why I haven't really done videos lately is just, actually the truth is I've gotten a new job recently, and I'm just trying to get adjusted to that schedule. I'm trying to figure out when, like, trying to find the energy to make a video after I see something or really I have had plenty of ideas I just haven't had the energy to actually fit make sit in front of the camera and talk um, for however long I talk um, it's just been a little bit of a struggle I'm trying to find that balance I'm sort of starting to get in that groove again I have plenty of videos that I love to talk about um, but that's another issue that I'm finding myself having is that when I make a video tends to be about the same subject matter that all the other big channels make about the video, about that specific movie or whatever it may be I'm talking about. So it's not a lot of fun to go and talk about something and feel like I'm saying the same thing that everybody else is saying, and I just essentially get lost among the masses. I'm just one guy. I do all of my shooting, editing, uh, posting, all of that stuff myself. So I don't have a lot of the notoriety as other big channels do. Even if it is a single person, I may, ha may not have the same amount of time. Um, I'm just one person doing this. So I'm trying to find the groove in, in order to do all of that process as well as 
make it sound original because I really don't like sounding like everybody else. Like, I've seen Guardians of the Galaxy. I thought it was phenomenal. But I didn't feel like sitting in front of a camera and saying Baby Groot was awesome and that, you know, Rocket Raccoon was great. Yondu's whole thing was great. Um, Maybe nitpick here and there. I just didn't want to do that. It just feels like I'm doing the same thing as everyone else. So although the those big name movies are the ones that I want to talk about the most, sometimes I probably won't talk about them just because everyone else is. And it's just kind of frustrating that you're going to get lost along, among the masses. And it's just one of those frustrating things. And I'd rather sort of be original and more true to myself than just say the same thing that everyone else is. And also, I know I promised several videos before I sort of went on this month hiatus of disappearance. Um, I probably won't get around to making those videos just because those subject matters are considered old now. Like, it's irrelevant after a month, which is crazy. But I have a bunch of other new stuff that I'm going to plan on working on and I'm looking forward to working on. Um, So please feel free to subscribe again down below so you can be... uh, be able to see those videos when I do make them. I really do appreciate all the views that I do get. Um, Although there are not many sometimes, I do appreciate every single one. So uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all I have for right now. Um, Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.